Hello, welcome to Dr. Agnes Math. Today we are learning about equivalent equations. Okay, we're just going to think of it as we are playing around with keeping equations equal. Um, we've talked about it in class, uh, but first off, let me just explain what an equivalent equation is. It is an equation or an equation. Uh, Actually, it is not an equation. It is two equations, two or more equations, with the same solution. Equivalent equations are two more equations with the same solution. Um, so basically, and we'll get to that down here, um, but for right here I just want to talk about keeping the equation balanced. So what I mean by that is think of the equal sign as like, uh, you know, we got the scales of justice right here. Like, you seen this? Well, that doesn't look right. So we have a scale that's a terrible scale, but it's it's a scale, and on this side has to balance out with this side. And so right now this is x minus one, and over here is seven, and they equal each other. So what we're going to do is we're going to do things to both sides, so and keep them equal. So if I subtract two, say I subtract two over here, I have to subtract two over here to keep things balanced. Um, so anyways, let's let's play with that thought. So I start out with x minus one equal to seven. Um, and then I want to subtract 2. So I'm going to take away 2 here. And what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So I'm going to take away 2 here. On this side, it becomes x minus 3, because negative 1 minus 3. And on this side, it becomes 5. I have kept it equal. Um, so here, I want to add 3 now. So I'm going to add 3 here, add 3 here x minus 3 becomes just x because negative 3 plus 3 goes away and then 5 plus 3 is equal to 8 and that's technically what x is equal to x is equal to 8 in this equation x is equal to 8 in this equation Think about, um, 8 minus 1 is 7 that's true and I've marked through it now but 8 minus 3 is equal to 5 that's true um, and when we want to keep that going so I'm going to take the x equal to 8 and now I'm going to multiply by 2 so I'm going to multiply by 2 here I'm going to multiply by 2 here this becomes 2x equal to 16 um, 2 times 8 is 16 so it's still equal I'm going to divide by 4 so I'm going to divide by 4 here divide by 4 here 2 fourths is the same thing as 1 half so 1 half x 16 divided by 4 is 4 so let's think here what's 1 half times 8 half of 8 is 4 so that's still true what I'm really just practicing and showing you adding subtract multiply and dividing equations but making sure they're equivalent and that's basically what we're doing today I'm not worried as much about solving the equations which we will a couple times today but really what I'm worried about is making sure that you understand what equivalence what equivalency is and while we're playing with equations that you make sure that you're constantly keeping both sides of the equation equal because in the future when we get this big equation this big long equation that's very easy to screw up if you don't keep both sides balanced the rest of your problem completely falls apart on you and I don't want that to happen so here we're going to state whether each pair of equations are equivalent um, and then we're going to give a reason. All right, so this one. So my my first pair, my first one is x plus three plus six x equal to thirteen, and I want to see if that's the same thing as seven x plus three is equal to thirteen. So I'm going to look for things that are similar. So this has thirteen and this has thirteen. So basically, I want to know whether or not this right here is the same thing as this right here okay so let's try to do that this has more terms what if I were to combine terms here so um, basically if I were to take X and X and combine them I'm not doing things to both sides of the equation but I can simplify one side of the equation that's allowed so X plus X that's gonna be 7x plus 
3, the 3 stays there. So 7x plus 3, 7x plus 3. They are the same. Um, so if you're going to answer this, you would say, yes, they are equivalent. We could just write equivalent. They are equivalent because um, you can simplify both to 7x plus 3 equals 13. Alright, so they're equivalent because you can simplify both to 7x plus 3 is equal to 13. And thus, you're going to get the same solution, right? Because 7x plus 3 equals 13 is going to be the same thing no matter what. Um, let's talk about this one. So we have 5x minus 4 equals 6, and I have 5x equal to 20. So let's look at both pairs of equations. Let's see. So what's the same? Um, this one has 5x. This one has 5x. So let's try to make both sides equal to 5. So this is 5x equals 20. So let's try to get 5x alone right here. To do that, I want to get rid of this plus, this negative 4. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides, making sure that I do the same thing to both sides um, and keeping the equivalent. So this becomes 5x because these cancel. 6 plus 4 is 10. So this one is 5x equals to 10. This side is 5x equals to 20. They should have the same solution, but they won't because they're equal to two different things. Um, the solution to this is x equals 2 because 2 times 5 is 10. And this is 4. 5 times 4 is 20. So not equivalent because... Um, 5x is equal to two different things. Sorry, that is not a very good spelling of different. Maybe it looks like the word now. All right. On the back. So here I'm going to um, solve this one. I have 2 thirds x equals a 4. This one I just have x is equal to 6. So we're going to decide whether or not they're the same equation. Now there's a host of different ways to do this. Um, I'm actually going to go about uh, two, I think. Um, one of them is to try to get x alone here. The other is to, if you were to put, because if x is equal to 6, this x has to equal 6. If you were to plug 6 in for this x, if it's true, if 2 thirds times 6 is equal to 4, then they have the same solution. Um, so first let's try that. We'll say 2 thirds times 6. So remember so that's like 6 over 1. Anytime I'm working with fractions, whole number over 1. 2 times 6 is 12. 3 times 1 is 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. It checks out. So it is equivalent. because 6 is solution to both equations. Um, let's talk about a different way. Uh, so say we had 2 thirds x is equal to 4. Now I want to isolate the variable. Now anytime you have a fraction like this in front of your variable, this is how you get rid of it. You multiply by what's called the reciprocal. And that is just a fancy, fancy word for the reverse or the upside down. Think of it as the upside down, those of you who watch Stranger Things. It's the upside down of the fraction. It's not necessarily a bad thing though. It's actually really nice. So I'm going to multiply this by 3 over 2. So basically this, look at it like this. 3 over 3 would cancel out and 2 over 2 would cancel out. And that's why it works. This side, so this side's equal to x. 4, remember that's like 4 over 1. 4 times 3 is 12 over 1 times 2 is 2, 12 divided by 2 is 6. So x is equal to, think of this as the same thing, x is equal to 6. I believe it's the transcendental property that says if this is equal to this and this is equal to that, then x is equal to that. Anyways, x equal to 6, x equal to 6, x equal to 6. That's another way to prove it. Um, one more uh, way to prove it. Um, would be so let me just talk about this one down here real quick 
So here's how you're going to prove this one, because it's, it's not in either one of our examples. And this one, actually. Both of these. If you can figure out what x is to one of them, you can plug it into the other and decide whether or not they're the same. Or you could just figure out what x is to each of them. If they are equivalent, they will have the same answer. But anyways, I'm going to stop there and let you guys do these four problems. That's all you have. Uh, should be relatively easy for you. Um, until then, math. Have a nice day.